Was General Flynn directed or authorized to do what he did? What was the extent of his conversations and contacts with Russia? Who else from the Trump administration, transition, or campaign had contact with the Russians? And why wasn't General Flynn fired? As soon as the administration find out, why did they act only when they were caught misleading the media? These are just a few of the questions that need to be answered. And these questions shouldn't just apply to General Flynn, but to senior officials in the Trump campaign, transition, and administration. Every one of these questions should be applied to all of them as well. There needs to be an independent and transparent investigation because the White House knew for weeks that General Flynn misled the Vice President and that his discussion about sanctions with the Russian government could potentially compromise our national security because he was subject to blackmail. And yet, they let him stay on for weeks, present at and participating in the highest level of national security discussions until those reports were made public. General Flynn's resignation is not the end of the story. It is merely the beginning. It is not the last chapter of this saga, but only the first. His resignation raises more questions than it answers, and the American people deserve to know the truth. In the days and weeks ahead, the Trump administration has many serious questions to answer. These questions must be asked by independent and unbiased law enforcement officers. They must be answered truthfully by administration officials. And any attempt to lie or mislead must be countered with the full force of the law. On Monday night, National Security Advisor Michael Flynn resigned under a torrent of criticism and suspicion as to the full extent of both his and the administration's ties with the Russian government. By Tuesday night, thanks to a coup of journalism courtesy of the Washington Post and the New York Times, with an assist from CNN and other outlets, we learned that members of the Donald Trump campaign for president were in constant contact with Russian intelligence throughout the campaign, something which the administration subsequently lied about. We learned that in January, Sally Yates, then the acting attorney general, warned the Trump administration as early as January that Flynn was potentially vulnerable to blackmail by the Russians. And we learned that for weeks, the so-called president and his merry crew of pirates saw fit to do precisely nothing about it. Least of all, tell anyone. We have only the dogged reporting of real journalists reporting hashtag real news to thank for this information. Had they not revealed it, it's anyone's guess when or even if the ghoulish and evasive unpresident would have deigned to tell the American people his national security advisor was a Russian plant. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and comrades of the resistance, we are quickly approaching one of those level one DEF CON whatever, drop your socks and grab your cocks, something gate, holy shit moments. The top, the end, the finale. Cue the fucking music. The Flingazi business is a fast-breaking story with many side characters, unknown pathways, and murky details. But from the mist-shrouded gloom of suspicion, there does emerge the outline of a capital S scandal. A big one. A doozy. Consider the following four facts in tandem, and you too may see the beast. 1. United States intelligence agencies have already confirmed that Russia, under the direction of Vladimir Putin, hacked into American networks, stole information from American citizens, and disseminated it in such a way as to hinder the presidential aspirations of the Democratic nominee and increase the probability of a more favorable outcome for them. Two, Michael Flynn was caught on tape discussing sanctions, a national security matter, with an agent of a foreign government in December, well before Trump took office. According to the BBC, it is, quote, illegal for a private citizen to conduct U.S. diplomacy, end quote. Three, the infamous Christopher Steele dossier, yeah, the hashtag golden showers one, was found by CNN to contain accurate information about specific details, calls, times of calls, 
persons involved, locations, etc. While it doesn't confirm every line of the dossier, it's worth remembering that in addition to stories about hookers and pee and such, Steele's sources claim that Russia and its agents were directly working and in contact with the Trump campaign, also level one holy shit illegal territory. As of Tuesday, the New York Times confirmed this part of the dossier as well. And four, The NSA, in conjunction with the FBI and other intelligence agencies, have been bringing the full might of our counterintelligence capabilities for months to capture calls, texts, emails, bank transfers, and your usual list of suspicious slash potentially criminal shit from people associated with Trump, his campaign, and his administration. As author and ex-NSA man Malcolm Nance said, These people need to start getting lawyers and cutting deals because when we have both sides of the conversation, you are going to get caught. So the hunt is on. Congress already has two investigations underway. That number seems suspiciously low. How many investigations were there into Benghazi? I'm drawing on the science of Trumpwellian multiplication now as I call for three times that many investigations. In fact, for every investigation into something not related to a Russian patsy infiltrating the White House, there must be five investigations into that. I also call for the investigators to be investigated and the results of their investigations investigated. In public, I call for senators, congressmen, and other officials who are investigating to not only call for additional investigations, but to adopt and prepare a sufficiently glowering look for the C-SPAN hearings. Anything less is unpatriotic, as Republicans have taught us these past several years. Where this story moves now is anybody's guess. At the dead sprint pace things are going, Luane and I are content to be in the same week as Trump's crazy train, let alone the same day. As of this recording, the question of questions has been posed and remains unanswered. It must be answered, however, in due course of time, because both our national security and a presidency literally depends on it. What did Trump know, and when did he know it? Congress will ask, investigative journalists will ask, and the FBI will ask. They will all keep asking, digging, rooting through facts and sources, nosing around. It is unlikely more like impossible, that any one of the three, let alone all three, can be deterred by Trump or any tactic he may try to evade this question and others. But it appears, at least to me, although admittedly I have no special knowledge or power save seeing the obvious patterns, that in layman's terms, Trump is already caught in a trap. The press caught him in several lies, and what the intelligence community has may be far worse than that. Also, now that he's gone from government, Michael Flynn can testify or be subpoenaed by Congress and put under oath. He can name names, including the one that just forced his resignation, if he's motivated. And you know, I am so, so curious what he might have to say. With any luck, what John R. Schindler, who broke the story about U.S. intelligence agencies withholding information from Putin's little American happy meal, wrote in The Observer will come to fruition. Quote, Presidential mania on social media isn't a pretty picture and will do nothing to stop the coming investigations by Congress into what exactly was going on between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin last year. Trump's bluster and deflections on the campaign trail suffice to push aside some of those troubling questions, but things have reached a point that the full story, no matter how unpleasant it may be, will come out eventually. I could go on and on, comrades, and I think there would be no end of the adjectives and fucks. We are in Dan Rather issues ominous-sounding comparisons to Watergate territory. But while we wait for history to unfold, we have a job to do in making it. Get on your phone, call your reps, and tell them you are concerned about the Trump administration's ties to Russia, and you demand to know what is being done personally by your congressman or senator. The American people deserve answers. These allegations against Trump demand thorough public scrutiny. And any form of stalling, misdirection, stonewalling, or opposition is unacceptable and, frankly, suspicious in itself. This is the fucking Russians we're talking about. Once upon a time, that meant something, even to the stodgiest conservative in the pew. Call them. Call them back. A foreign government worked to install a man in our White House. Yes, our White House who turned around and employed, at the very least, multiple individuals that appear to have colluded with said foreign government for months. Your representatives need to know that you are not okay with it, and I mean not one damn bit. They need to hear that you will be watching their actions every day, all the time, and that not one maneuver to shield Trump or his friends from the consequences of their actions will be forgotten or ignored. You either side with the truth and with America or a hostile foreign power. Call them and call them again.